Okay, welcome to the uh, sensors tutorial. We can start with a new empty project. Um, go to the project properties and name the project and then save the file in a uh, new folder wherever you're doing your exercises. You can create a new folder called sensors and then save this project within that folder. And we can take the uh, input files that were provided um, and paste them into the into your selected exercise folder. Now in this project specifically we want to switch on on the fly projection within QGIS so that any objects that we import with different uh, spatial projections will be displayed properly and this is important because all of the sensors are saved in uh, geographic coordinates and uh, GIS projects um, can use any number of uh, different projections. For this project we can also open the Open Layers plugin which will allow us to see open street maps um, within QGIS. I've already installed it, but you can do so if you haven't done so already. So, um, in order to import sensors, uh, we need to have a FreeWatt project. So, we're going to do that in this step. Uh, even though we're not going to make a uh, groundwater model with ModFlow, um, the OAT sensors are always connected to a specific FreeWord project and the sensors are then also stored in the model database. So in this case, um, the model parameters are not so important. Uh, what's important is to then choose the correct um, projection system and then we can click OK and the necessary model files are created. So we then need to connect our project with the uh, database that we just created. Um, you can delete some previous databases that you had and then click New and navigate to the database that is now in your uh, project folder. Click Connect. And this database is actually empty and we don't need to add anything else. We can close this window. And now we can start adding some sensors. We do this through the FreeWatt uh, menu, FreeWatt OIT Add Time Series. And uh, the first method that we're going to use is to add a time series as a CSV. Then we select the necessary input file from our input files folder. And uh, the file that we're going to choose is going to display the um, head observations. Now it's important whenever filling in uh, these fields that you check the whichever CSV you're using to know uh, which columns you want to import, which separators there are, and uh, which format uh, the date will use. Um, there is a drop-down menu for some predefined formats of date, um, but otherwise they can be found on the website specified in the PDF. So we can click Preview to see how our CSV file will be loaded into um, the database. And uh, if that's correct, then we can proceed. If not, the fields need to be readjusted. So then we can start filling in the metadata for the sensor with the location, if we have it, and then the observed properties as well. Locations can be left at zero um, and edited later, but um, properties 
and uh, units of measurements have to be filled in now. So once we fill this in, we can click apply and uh, our time series is loaded and then we can click on OK and the time series is now saved in the model database as a new sensor. So the next step is to add uh, a time series from an online service using the IST sensor observation standard. You'll need the um, URL. In this case, we're going to use the um, URL provided in the PDF. Um, and uh, in other projects, uh, the process also allows for user authentication with the password. So then we'll select the, what we just added from the drop down menu, click connect, and then from that service, choose the um, sensor. In this case, we're choosing precipitation for Lugano. And then when we click apply, all of the information is automatically filled in. This um, metadata can be changed later, um, but in this case, we'll keep it as it is, and we click OK and uh, save the sensor. If no connection can be made to the server, we've also included um, the CSV files for this sensor. So um, there is also the option of adding raw data manually into OOT, but uh, this will not be covered in uh, this tutorial. Um, the metadata needs to be filled out and then uh, each time um, data point can be added manually. This uh, may be useful if the data that you want to make into a time series is not available digitally, but otherwise it's quite work intensive. In the next step we're going to start reading um, time series from the modflow listing file, um, specifically from the uh, volume budgets. Um, that are calculated at the end of every time step. So this example file um, contains uh, quite a few time steps and also uh, very many different uh, boundary conditions. Um, so we can read um, all of the boundary conditions um, in that file um, and most of the boundary conditions that can be um, used in Modflow. So we select the listing file, and then from the drop-down menu, um, we can choose from the uh, boundary conditions within that file. It's important to know which um, boundary conditions are in the file, um, otherwise the time series returned will just be a zero time series. Um, as with all sensors, we still need to fill in the metadata in this case. We can just uh, make a test, but we'll be using primarily um, volumes. And uh, the user should feel free to um, experiment with the different uh, listing files, um, uh, with the different boundary conditions in the listing file, and, uh, and whether to display the cumulative um, volumes or the volumes in every time step. Here I'm just demonstrating some of the other uh, boundary conditions or uh, terms in the listing file that can be uh, represented as a time series. So this is a very um, good way to look at model results for specific um, boundary conditions if you have a lot of time steps. The next uh, thing we're going to do is we're going to add uh, a time series from a head observation file which is a specific format created by Mudflow to display the um, observed and simulated uh, values. So observed are the real life values and the simulated equivalents are the values generated from the Mudflow simulation. Um, and this is a standard file format uh, that uh, OAT can read the time series out of. Now one uh, 
head observation file may contain will contain um, all of the head observations for a model so it's important to specify the name of the um, head observation that you want to upload and uh, we also need to specify the discretization um, file and the input file uh, for OAT to be able to read um, all the information properly, as well as uh, the metadata for this sensor. Once we've done this, we can click on OK to save the sensor and then proceed. The gauge file is similarly a output created by Modflow um, that we can also read as a time series. Usually one file is created for each um, gauge, and in this case we can open the um, file provided. Once we open the file, we need to specify a starting date and time. And this is done because in the gauge file, um, there is only a time from the start of the simulation. Um, so if we want to compare this time series with other time series, it's important uh, to not just have simulation time, but also a starting time to compare to the real world situation. And then once again, we fill in the metadata and uh, the location as well as the observed properties. In this case, um, it'll be water discharge and uh, cubic meters per second. And then we can apply that and uh, save the time series. Now we move on to the next portion, which is managing the time series. So through the OAT interface, we can uh, go to manage sensors. The interface can be used um, to um, change a variety of things um, about the sensor and the metadata, um, to display the sensor um, as, a, as a time series, or to look at the raw data. Um, we can do that by clicking on the edit data screen and uh, then this table that is loaded into the um, window can be changed just like any other QGIS um, table. Um, if you're using an older version of QGIS it may be that the table is not embedded. We can export a sensor um, as a CSV file so for example, if we've downloaded uh, data from an online server, we can do that. We can also create a duplicate of this um, sensor in case we want to make some changes. Um, then if any of the data in the sensor is changed, we can click on update um, to save those changes and the sensor can also be deleted from the model database. So we can also click on see in QGIS, um, in which case the uh, current sensor will be highlighted. Uh, in this case, when we zoom out, we can see that one of the sensors is still has the coordinates of zero, zero. But if we zoom on the other coordinates and display a uh, open street map in the background, we can see where these uh, sensors are located and uh, it's very close to Lugano. So these are some of the um, sensors that are administered by SUPSI. Now the um, simulated head number one, we did not add any location information for that. And that is why it is located at zero zero on the equator. So we need to update those uh, coordinates uh, you can take those from the PDF. We will also change the frequency um, in this uh, sensor to 1D, um, meaning that uh, 
their sensor data every day. Then we can click on update to save these changes. Now we also want to update the observed head one, which also does not have frequency data, and we also set that to 1D, meaning one day. So that gives a quick overview of what can be done through the Manage Sensors interface. And then we can move on to the next one, uh, the Process Time Series interface. Um, and there are a variety of different uh, processes that can be applied to um, any of the uploaded time series. And uh, we're also working on uh, constantly updating this and uh, expanding the library of available um, procedures. We're going to um, process the precipitation data and some of the others. So in the window, um, in the drop down menu, you will be able to see all the sensors that are currently within your model and as soon as you click preview you will see a preview and you can select a process and then within this screen um, the parameters of that process will be displayed and it will change according to each process then we can execute and save the newly created time series so we're going to start with uh, precipitation Lugano and we're going to fill uh, the time series to make sure that there are no gaps in our data. To do this we first select the sensor, click on preview, and then choose fill from the drop down menu. We can select different methods of filling, in this case we are filling um, through time interpolation and we allow zero um, data gaps. So what we can do is we can use this processed um, time series without saving it for another process. And uh, we will do that to um, extract different hydrological events from this time series. And this could be used actually to uh, extract any events. Um, we're going to choose one day before and after a peak of 0.5 and then when we um, execute we will be presented with three new time series that we can save separately. So these are uh, three precipitation events that meet the uh, selected criteria. And then if we want we can calculate some basic statistics for these newly created time series by selecting them from the drop-down menu, pressing preview, and then choosing statistics from the processes. And we can execute, and we are presented with the statistics about this time series as text. So we can also use some of these processes on the discharge data, So we're going to use it to um, subtract the difference between two time series and uh, we're going to use discharge data to do that and we can upload um, new discharge data from another CSV. We can fill in the columns as specified in the PDF. And as always, we need to fill in some uh, metadata for this sensor.
And once that has been done, we can um, apply and then save this new sensor. Now we've um, uploaded the data for discharge point B, as you can see in that map. Um, and then from the online server, we will download the data for discharge measured at point A. The previously loaded uh, CSV um, corresponds in time exactly to this downloaded data. And once we download it, um, we can rename this sensor to discharge A and save it. Now that we have two um, discharge measurements on the same um, river, we could use these to calculate the difference between the two and thus, uh, similar to a mod flow river observation, um, calculate how much water is flowing uh, to or from the groundwater. And more about the river observations can be read from the mod flow manuals. Um, the next step in order to create such observations is to load um, the discharge A into the process time series window and uh, subtract from it discharge B and execute. Um, Modflow river observations are always upstream minus downstream. And once we've calculated that, we can save this new time series as a riv river observation. So the next thing that we can do is we can compare a um, gauge file, which results from a model simulation, to the observed values that were measured in the field. Now, in order to compare the two time series, they should have the same frequency um, or the same temporal resolution. So what we can do is we can resample the um, discharge measurements so that the resolution matches the resolution of the um, simulated results. And once we've done this, we can proceed to the next step, which is to compare the two time series. And this can be done through the FreeWatt OAT compare sensor. So here we can select two sensors and load them both into a window at the same time in order to be able to compare them. And we can do the same thing um, in the next step with uh, the observed and simulated head observations. Um, Once this is done, this concludes this tutorial. Um, there are a variety of other processes that can be applied to time series, which cannot all be covered in a video, but which are covered extensively in the manual. If you have any questions, if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to contact us.